Hey, Crypto Warriors, it's Ultra Crypto back in the day. It's Sunday, the 24th of January, 2021. Bitcoin is still down. Pretty much so is the rest of the market. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's all I can say. A lot of red squiggly lines on the seven day side, as you can see. ETH is up though. Still 15% for 20 for the past 24 hours and 3% for the week. Chainlink is up 18% for the week. And that's pretty much it in the top 10. Let's get into it. Give me a follow on Twitter at Sartre Crypto 99 Saw this on Twitter. Uh, billionaire hedge fund manager Paul Singer just claimed that cryptocurrencies are nothing. He's, three, he's worth $3.6 billion. So he, he must know what, what he's talking about, right? Let's get into it. This is the actual story here coming from Blockworks. Paul Singer, cryptocurrencies are nothing. He's a hedge fund manager, like I stated, and he knows a lot about you know managing money, things of that nature, but he have no idea about cryptocurrency. He's just another dinosaur with you know short arms and deep pocket. Here it is. I've been investing for a long time and I gave up a long time ago trying to base my investment management activities on the capital, I'm sorry, on the concept that markets and investors and traders are rational. I agree with him right there. Traders, the market in general is irrational. As a matter of fact, in the book, not from Warren Buffett, but from his mentor, uh, Benjamin Graham, the intelligent investor, they talk about the market and they call it Mr. Market. Right. And yeah, Mr. Market is very ir irrational. People try to be rational and think that they're rational, but quite frequently they're not. There is hardly a better example today than cryptocurrencies to tell me that something that's constructed as a computer program where you engage in some process of sitting there in front of your computer and after a period, period of time and the expenditure of a bunch of electricity, a message appears on your screen that you have created something that's ridiculous. It's nothing. Gold is not nothing. That's a double negative. He, he does not speak. He doesn't have a proper grasp of the English language. Gold is something you will hurt your teeth if you bite a gold coin. He obviously doesn't understand. He, he's a type of investor like, like Warren Buffett where they get in on the wave. 10 years later. So in the mobile wave 2009 2010 when you know cuz during this whole bull market in the traditional uh stock market in the S&P if you invested in Apple and the Amazons, Tesla, right? Without looking at, you know, quarterly earnings and PE like ratio and all this other stuff but like like a traditional uh, value in, investor would, um, then you made made a lot of money. But a value investor, they got into the they got in on the back end of the wave and, and missed out on a lot of gains. And that's that's what I, I assume this guy is right here. He's more of a value investor, and he doesn't understand tech. He doesn't he doesn't understand it. But just because he don't understand something doesn't mean that it's not something of value no institution can meet their goals by owning those bonds he's talking about uh bonds here let me see singer he spoke about the, the drop and talking about bonds now they're no longer a hedge against equity portfolios he said when you buy something with no yield where you can only make money if the yield goes from zero to negative five or negative ten you're engaged in speculation you're not engaged in investing and i agree with him as far as trying to hold government bonds you're ridiculous if you're trying to hold government bonds right now you're just burnt you're just basically burning your money up i definitely agree with him right there and also agree with him with the market be, being irrational as we saw during last week the dip last week when the market had a big drop especially because of uh, all the fud that was coming out about the market people are irrational people are, are emotional at, and they get scared and even institutions get scared because in my video yesterday I showed you that a company that bought Bitcoin uh, towards the end of last year already sold it because they thought that the double spend issue was real once you have people's emotions involved people they get scared 
and they get irrational. Also, with this guy, this dinosaur with uh, short arms and deep pockets, he doesn't understand Bitcoin. He does not understand technology because Bitcoin still works. If I want to send money anywhere in the world to anyone, you can't stop me. As long as they have a Bitcoin wallet and they have the funds, or I'm sorry, I have the funds, I can send it to them without the necessary uh, intermediaries of a bank or some third party entity like a Western Union or something like that, right? Next, JP Morgan offers three reasons investors should consider Bitcoin despite its unconventional and highly volatile nature. What a turnaround, right? What a turnaround. Yeah, we keep receipts around here, man. We we keep receipts around here from the time Jamie Dimon was spitting his poison to now they're all of a sudden crypto experts over there at JP Morgan, right? Well, let's just get into this article and dig a little deeper. This is coming from the Daily Hoddle. And in an assessment issued by JP Morgan's cross asset strategy team, the firm explains the benefits of investing in Bitcoin despite its large and frequent price fluctuations. So basically they're, they're, they're ha they have now a specific team to analyze and uh, give price predictions on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Literally three years ago, we had Jamie Dimon coming out saying that he would fire any trader that traded Bitcoin. Crazy. Economist and crypto trader Alex Kruger shared the document on Twitter. In it, the banking firm highlights overall favorable market conditions, the diminishing returns of bonds and conventional hedges, and Bitcoin's unconventional platform as factors that make the asset worth enduring high volatility. Like the volatility of Bitcoin is not a bug. It is a function of the protocol. It is so volatile because of the vol really is because of the volatility of the US dollar. Because one Bitcoin still equals to one Bitcoin. At the end of the day, one Bitcoin is equal to one Bitcoin. The reason why the price is jumping so much is because of the volatility of the US dollar. So again, it is a function of the protocol, all right? Why bother considering an unconventional and high volatility hedge? Three reasons. Equity and credit valuations look record rich for a very young business cycle. Conventional hedges like DM bonds barely serve as insurance when US 10-year rates are near 1%. Because <laughs> that the one percent is so amazing, uh, an amazing return that you're going to get if you buy bonds. Some as on yet unseen shocks, materially higher inflation is, is coming, economically debilitating cyber attacks, or climate catastrophe could favor an asset that operates outside conventional channels. We're starting to see that narrative change and JP Morgan is trying to come into the space as if they are experts when we know that they're really not for for this all right they're just a bunch of again dinos a bunch of snakes trying to come in and pretend that you know they are here for the good of the community JP Morgan's uh, release comes as Bitcoin is uh, showcasing its trademark volatility asset is down nearly 11% on the day and 20% on the week as of this writing. So yeah, we're starting to see the narrative change. Eventually, this dinosaur over here will change his tune as well. And if he doesn't, who cares? This is crypto. We don't care about what those dinosaurs say. Let's discuss it in the comment section below. Smash that like, hit that subscribe button, the notification bell to get notified when I upload new videos. It's all the crypto and I'm out. Peace.